fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear, and I will permit it to pass over me. Where the fear is gone, there will be nothing. Only I will. Exploring the essence of compelling science fiction involves delving into a myriad of intricate elements that elevate a narrative beyond the realms of mere fantastical escapades or comic relief. In the realms of lesser science fiction, often enticed by the charm of fantastical elements, there exists a shared flaw, a tendency to shy away from delving into the profound depth of moral questioning. Deciphering the anatomy of exceptional science fiction, we find ourselves drawn to the universe of Dune a magnum opus that not only exemplifies the genre, but also stands as a testament to the power of storytelling. As we dissect the intricate layers of this epic tale, it becomes evident that a key ingredient in the formula for exceptional science fiction lies in the establishment of a fittingly dark and immersive backdrop. Arrakis is a desolate expanse, a barren wasteland devoid of life-sustaining water, a hostile terrain where peril lurks around every dune. Inhabitants of this inhospitable world include not only the dangerous natives, but also a mythical creature of unparalleled danger, the sandworms. These colossal entities transcend the mere classification of creatures, embodying forces of nature that shape the very planet of Arrakis. In this captivating landscape, Dune weaves a tale that extends beyond conventional storytelling, inviting audiences into a realm where moral quandaries are as palpable as the shifting sands. As the layers of intrigue are unveiled within this science fiction masterpiece, we begin to appreciate the significance of confronting moral dilemmas, an essential element that separates exceptional science fiction from its lesser counterparts. Dune is special not just because of its intricate world building and intense themes, but also for its commentary on philosophy, religion, and politics. Dune engages readers in a philosophical journey, prompting contemplation on the nature of consciousness, identity, and the limits of human potential. The Bene Gesserit, with their mental and physical training, exemplify Herbert's exploration of the mind's capacity for self-awareness and control. The mystery of life isn't a problem to solve, but a reality to experience. Encapsulating the central theme of Dune, this quote emphasizes the idea that life's enigmas are not meant to be unraveled through mere intellect, but embraced and experienced on a visceral level. In navigating the intricacies of prophecy, power, and identity, Paul confronts the unpredictable nature of life, realizing that his destiny is not a puzzle to solve, but a multifaceted reality to be lived, with all its challenges, choices, and consequences. The more he tries to control and force the future, the worse it becomes. Paul's attempt to manipulate the course of destiny, driven by his visions and prophetic insights, result in unintended consequences. The loss of billions of lives in the relentless and uncontrollable wave of the Jihad. His story serves as a cautionary tale, urging us to appreciate the delicate balance between navigating the unknown and the dangers of attempting to master the profound mysteries of existence. With the release of Dune Part 2, fans and moviegoers alike can finally see the conclusion of Denis Villeneuve's visionary adaptation of Frank Herbert's masterpiece. The first installment left audiences captivated by its stunning visuals and intricate storytelling, setting the stage for what is an even more immersive experience in the sequel. Dune Part 2 picks up where its predecessor left off, thrusting audiences back into the politically charged and mystically infused world of Arrakis. Paul Atreides, portrayed by Timothy Chalamet, continues his transformative journey from reluctant heir to a messianic figure, as he grapples with the newfound powers and the weight of responsibilities. The intricate web of political machinations, familial conflicts, and the prophetic visions that shape Paul's destiny unfold in a riveting and intricately complex manner. Compared to part one, the film deepens its exploration of the Atreides' legacy, the mystic Bene Gesserit sisterhood, and the power struggles between the great noble houses. With the introduction of new characters and the evolution of existing ones, Dune Part Two delves into the complexities of variant alliances, betrayals, and the delicate balance of power and fortune found on Arrakis. The narrative weaves a tapestry of suspense, emotion, and philosophical introspection, keeping audiences engrossed from start to finish. 
One of the standout features in the first Dune installment was its visually stunning portrayal of the desert planet Arrakis. Dune Part 2 builds upon this foundation immensely, immersing viewers even further into the intricacies of Herbert's universe. The expansive deserts, intricate architecture, and the otherworldly technology of the Dune universe are showcased with even greater detail, transporting audiences into a realm that is both awe-inspiring and foreboding. Every shot in this movie is a piece of art, showcasing the genius behind every frame. The film's creative team, including cinematographer Greg Frazier, continues their commitment to authenticity and visual excellence. The sprawling landscapes, awe-inspiring sandworms, and the iconic scenes from the novel are brought to life with a level of detail that goes beyond the expectations of even the most ardent Dune fans. The immersive world building is a visual feast and a testament to the dedication of the filmmakers in staying true to Herbert's complex vision. Dune Part 2 stands on the precipice of becoming a landmark in cinematic history, as much of its success hinges on the intricate plot development and the immersive world building, but most importantly, audience reception. As the film delves into the complexities of Arrakis and the characters that inhabit this fantastical world, it is poised to redefine the boundaries of science fiction storytelling and cinema. With its commitment to authenticity, stellar performances, and a narrative that transcends genre conversations, Dune Part 2 will be an absolutely unforgettable film delving into the heart of one of the most iconic literary universes ever created. Now it's obvious to say, but cinematography plays a pivotal role in the storytelling process, and in the realms of science fiction epics, it is an even more integral aspect of the overall cinematic experience. With the release of the new movie, the expectations surrounding the cinematography are nothing short of monumental. The first movie already had masterful cinematography and effects, but when combined with the immaculate sound design and score, it became an unforgettable movie-going experience. And after seeing the movie, I can happily confirm that the second Dune film surpasses every expectation, with some of the most epic visual moments I've seen in any film. The movie continues its exploration of the desert planet of Arrakis, the vast and awe-inspiring landscape that serves as the backdrop for the intricate narrative. Building upon the visual language established in the first movie, cinematographer Greg Frazier further expands the visual tapestry of Arrakis. The film excels when it comes to immersing the viewer into the world, with some of the best world building I've ever seen on screen, with it only being added to by the immensity of lore found in the original book. Frazier, known for his work on films like Rogue One and The Batman, brings a wealth of experience and a keen eye for detail to the cinematography of Dune Part Two. Collaborating once again with Denis Villeneuve, the duo has established a visual language that not only captures the grandeur of the source material, but also enhances the emotional depth of the characters and the narrative. The second part of the story is far more emotionally compelling than Dude Part 1 was, beautifully portraying the relationship and emotion between Paul and Chani, which was really lacking in the first film. The use of practical effects Intricate set designs in carefully chosen locations contribute to the film's visual authenticity. Filming in an actual desert under harsh environmental conditions really sells the visceral, immersive quality of the film. Frazier's ability to balance the epic scale of Arrakis with the intimate character moments also creates a dynamic visual experience that resonates with audiences on multiple levels. The cinematography in this film especially really serves as a silent storyteller, conveying emotions, themes, and character dynamics without uttering a single word. In Dune Part 2, the visual storytelling is as profound as the narrative itself. Each shot, angle, and composition is meticulously crafted with an immense amount of foresight to enhance the themes of power, destiny, and the ecological intricacies of Arrakis. The cinematography also utilizes symbolism and visual metaphors to underscore the complex relationships between the characters and the societal structures at play. From the regal halls of noble houses to the vastness of the desert, every visual element contributes to the narrative, creating visual language that enhances the audience's understanding and emotional connection to the story. But despite all of this, what I find most impressive about the visual effects is the quality to which they are done. Many of the techniques are far from groundbreaking and have been used across countless films, but are rarely executed to this level of perfection. Everything from the lighting to the overall environment perfectly blend with the CG elements, only adding to the immersion. Now no epic film would be complete without an equally epic score. 
Hans Zimmer's highly anticipated score, known for its evocative audio cues, set a high standard in the first installment. The critically acclaimed score in the initial Dune film created a sonic atmosphere integral to the narrative. Dune Part 2 builds upon this brilliance, elevating emotional stakes and becoming what is, in my opinion, one of the best and most unique scores that Hans Zimmer has done. The score somehow mirrors the vastness and complexity of Arrakis perfectly, utilizing diverse instruments and tonalities. Tribal beats, synth elements, and haunting melodies contribute to an immersive audio palette, enhancing the rich tapestry that is the planet of Arrakis. This partnership between Villeneuve and Zimmer, as demonstrated in the first film, continues seamlessly. The symbiotic relationship between the director and composer results in a score intricately woven into the fabric of the film. The palpable anticipation surrounding Zimmer's score suggests its potential to become iconic, leaving a lasting legacy within the realm of film music. As fans and critics eagerly await the musical journey in Dune Part 2, the score is poised to be a defining element of the cinematic experience. Now to wrap this all up, the movie isn't perfect. It does deviate from the book in a few major ways. However, I do feel that most of these changes are in fact warranted, as changes to the source material are necessary for any form of on-screen adaptation from a book or written piece of media. Ultimately, this movie is what has been missing from Hollywood these past few years. The movie actually has a soul, and it's clear that the creators have both reverence for the source material and a passion for their adaptation, adding to the unforgettable cinema experience that this is. In light of my very long-winded video, I do suggest going to watch this movie on the biggest screen you can. Everything from the visuals, to the sound design, to the sheer scope of the film make it an instant classic. I would even go so far as to call this movie the Lord of the Rings of sci-fi, which I do not do lightly. Dune has proven time and time again, whether through the eloquence of written words or the captivating tapestry of visual storytelling, that it stands as a testament to the enduring power of speculative fiction. Frank Herbert's magnum opus has not merely etched its mark into the annals of literature, but has transcended mediums, evolving into an immense experience that challenges the boundaries of imagination. As we navigate the unforgiving sands of Arrakis, we find ourselves not merely spectators, but active participants in a journey that explores the profound depths of morality, the complexities of power, and the indomitable spirit of humanity.